So the 2021 NHL trade deadline has officially came and gone. Overall today was relatively boring. I mean, we all kind of expected that after the flurry of trades that happened late last night, but luckily the deadline was saved in the final 10 minutes or so and like 20 minutes after the deadline had passed when we learned about a couple of really interesting trades, most notably Anthony Mantha being dealt to the Capitals. I'm not gonna talk about that trade in this video because there's already a video up on the channel dedicated to that and giving you guys my initial reaction. So go check that out if you have not already. And this video isn't just going to be me recapping and reviewing the trades that happened today on deadline day i'm going to be going back a couple of days all the way back to the trades that happened right after the palmary and zajac trade because i made a individual video on that and this is going to be a long video so sit back relax grab a snack and let's talk about some trades so we're going to go in chronological order, starting with this trade that happened a couple of days ago between the Panthers and the Blackhawks. I talked about it in depth, sort of, in yesterday's Q&A video. This was basically Florida clearing cap space, getting rid of Brett Connolly's contract, and it was Chicago maximizing their cap space and getting two young assets in Borgstrom and Stillman in exchange for taking on Connolly's contract. To me, the most intriguing asset in this deal for Chicago is definitely Henrik Borgstrom. He was a first-round pick back in the 2016 draft has played some NHL games, but obviously up until this point hasn't lived up to the expectations of being a first round pick. And we are going to have to wait till next season to see Borgstrom in Chicago because he is an RFA. He's been playing over in Finland this year and obviously the deadline to sign RFAs has passed. Overall, like I said, just a cap dump and hopefully Borgstrom can end up being a prominent part of the Blackhawks future. Next up, we have one of the two trades we're going to talk about between Columbus and Toronto in this video. This trade was the Maple Leafs acquiring centerman Riley Nash in exchange for a conditional seventh round pick in the 2022 draft. The condition on that pick is it becomes a sixth round selection if Nash plays 25% of Toronto's playoff games in 2021. This is a great bit of work by Kyle Dubas. He acquired Riley Nash who is currently injured so he can go on the LT and that frees up some more cap space and it's likely Riley Nash is going to be ready to go for the playoffs where cap doesn't matter so they'll be able to use him and Riley Nash is a relatively solid defensive fourth line centerman you can never have too many capable depth players when you're trying to go on a playoff run so like I said pretty smart move here by Kyle Dubas freeing up some cap space and also getting a guy that they can use in the playoffs next up we have a trade that sent Patrick Nemeth from the Red Wings to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for a 2022 fourth round pick so the Colorado Avalanche brings Patrick Nemeth back here. He was a member of the Avalanche before he signed with the Red Wings as a free agent. In the one and a half seasons Nemeth has spent with the Red Wings, he's been completely fine. He's a solid defensive defenseman. He definitely wasn't part of the problem in Detroit, that's for sure. Played top four minutes with the Wings, likely isn't going to play top four minutes with the Avalanche with the bodies they have on the blue line, but it's a nice depth addition, especially for a team like Colorado who has struggled with injuries to a lot of their defensemen this season. And as a Red Wings fan, fourth round pick for Nemeth, I'm completely okay with that. This frees up a roster spot for somebody like Dennis Shalowski or Gustav Lindstrom to now come into the lineup. Continuing on now, this next trade saw the Florida Panthers acquire Brandon Montour from the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for a 2021 third round pick. I don't know how I feel about this trade for the Panthers. Brandon Montour has had a good season or two in the NHL, but ever since arriving in Buffalo and even his final season with the Ducks, he really hasn't been that great. In my opinion, there were better options out there. Even a guy like Patrick Nemeth has been better than Montour over the past season or two. Uh, Victor Mete is another guy who actually was just claimed off of waivers today by the Senators. Like, you're telling me Florida couldn't have sent a third round pick to Montreal for Victor Mete? I would rather him than Brandon Montour. That's just my opinion though. Like I said, Montour has had a good season in the NHL. Hopefully he can get back to playing at that level for the Panthers. We all kind of expected them to go out and acquire a defenseman with Ekblad being out for the season. I'm just not sure how I feel about the defenseman they acquired. Continuing on now, we have another trade that I'm not really sure how I feel boat and that is the Colorado Avalanche acquiring goaltender Devin Dubnik from the San Jose Sharks in exchange for Greg Patteron and a 2021 fifth. With Franco's being on LTIR, it was evident that Colorado needed to go out and acquire a capable goaltender to help out Philip Grubauer a little bit, take some of the pressure off of him. Is Devin Dubnik going to be that guy though? He was bad for Minnesota last season. He hasn't been the greatest for San Jose this season. Like, is that much of an upgrade over somebody like Jonas Johansson who does have a 900 save percentage 
than a below three goals against so far this season with the Avs. Dubnik definitely was a really cheap option, and I'm sure that's why Colorado decided to go with him as opposed to somebody like Jonathan Bernier, for example. It does still add depth to Colorado's goaltending situation, gives them some insurance, and I mean, hopefully Dubnik can bounce back with Colorado. Next up, we have one of the bigger trades that took place, a three-way deal between the Jackets, Lightning, and Red Wings. This trade saw the Lightning acquire David Savard and Brian Lashoff. The Blue Jackets acquire a 2021 first and a 2022 third, and for retaining some salary and sending Lashoff to the Lightning, the Red Wings got a 2021 fourth round pick out of this. I think Blue Jackets fans should be extremely excited about the return they got here, the third round pick, and most importantly, that first round pick. Yeah, it's going to be a late first rounder, but looking at some of the returns other teams got for players like, again, Taylor Hall only got a second and Anders Bjork. So again, if you're a Blue Jackets fan, getting a first, I feel like you got to be pretty happy about that. And for the Tampa Bay Lightning, David Savard is definitely a nice pickup. They did overpay, but I mean, they overpaid for Barclay Goudreau and Blake Coleman at last year's deadline, and look at how that turned out. Next up, we have a trade between the Capitals and the Devils that sent defenseman Jonas Siegenthaler to New Jersey and a 2021 third round pick to the Washington Capitals. I think this could turn out to be a sneaky good pickup for the New Jersey Devils. Obviously, they're a team not, you know, competing for a playoff spot right now, so this isn't some type of rental. This is a guy I'm sure they expect to be there long term. Ziegenthaler is 23 years old, has played a limited amount of games over the past two seasons and a limited amount of minutes, but in those limited minutes and games, he's put up some pretty impressive defensive results. And for a team like the Devils, who are the ninth worst team in the league in terms of goals against per game, they allow 3.20 per game. I think a guy who has been good defensively throughout his career should naturally be a pretty good fit, right? Next up, we have another trade involving a defensive defenseman, John Merrill, acquired by the Montreal Canadiens in exchange for a 2021 fifth round pick and Hayden Verbeek. I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce his name. I'm not all that familiar with the player. Looking at his hockey DB, he's an undrafted guy, has played a little bit in the Slovak League and in the American Hockey League this season for Laval. He's 23. Don't really think there's anything there. Basically, I just look at this trade like a fifth round pick for John Merrill and given that price point, I think this is a really nice addition for the Montreal Canadiens. Merrill played a lot for the Red Wings this season, averaged close to 20 minutes a night, and he's a plus two, and I know not a lot of people are a fan of plus minus, but on the Red Wings, I feel like that is pretty noteworthy, especially when you play that many minutes. He's solid defensively five on five. Like I said, I think this is a nice pickup by Montreal. I think he'll probably slot in on the bottom pairing, but even if he's a guy that isn't in the lineup every single night, they didn't give up a lot to get him whatsoever. Next up, we have another one of the bigger trades that took place here a three-way deal between the Leafs, Blue Jackets, and Sharks. The Toronto Maple Leafs acquire Nick Foligno and Stefan Nosen. The Blue Jackets acquire a 2021 first and a 2022 fourth, and the Sharks acquire a 2021 fourth for trading Nosen to the Leafs and retaining some salary on Foligno's contract. When this trade initially broke, I seen a lot of people kind of roasting the Leafs and Kyle Dubas for giving up a first-round pick for Nick Foligno and what he is at this stage of his career, which is pretty much like a middle six defensive specialist who can chip in some offense here and there. Is a first round pick pricey for that type of player? Of course it is, but that's what the trade deadline is. It's contending teams overpaying for players that usually wouldn't fetch that big of a return. I think Felino is going to be a great fit for the Leafs though. Just looking at all of his intangibles, this is a guy who they can place on the third line with like Mikheyev and Hyman. Imagine that shutdown line. Or they could play him on the first or second line with like Nylander and Tavares or Marner and Matthews. He'd be able to keep up with those guys. And not only that, this is a guy who I think is going to fit right in perfectly in the lock room. He's been the captain of the Columbus Blue Jackets for a while now. The Leafs now have what, like four former captains on the roster? Spezza, Thornton, Felino, and obviously John Tavares, who's the current captain. To me, Nick Felino is a guy who you want on your team come playoff time. And the Leafs know all about Nick Felino in the playoffs because his team literally eliminated the Leafs in the 2020 playoffs. And quickly touching on this trade from the Blue Jackets perspective, again, if you're a Jackets fan, you gotta be extremely happy about this, getting a fourth and another first round pick, especially in a buyer's market market, which this year certainly is, getting two first round picks for two players on expiring contracts like Felino and Savard, you gotta take that and run with it. And honestly, I wouldn't be that surprised if we see Nick Felino just re-sign with the Blue Jackets as a UFA in the offseason. I think that's definitely a possibility. This next trade saw the Boston Bruins acquire defenseman Mike Riley from the Ottawa Senators in exchange for a 2022 third round pick. I really like this move for Boston. I think it makes a whole lot of sense, especially when you consider all of the injuries that they've had to their blue line this season. And Mike Riley is a guy who, ever since getting to Ottawa, has put up extremely impressive results, both offensively and defensively, even going back to last season after he was traded there from Montreal. So we'll see if Mike Riley can continue to do that with the Bruins. If he does, then this is obviously a great addition. Can 
continuing on now, another Leafs trade here. They acquired goaltender David Riddick, aka Big Save Dave, from the Calgary Flames in exchange for a 2022 third round pick. Pretty much what this trade means, or at least it's what I first thought of when I seen this break. Freddie Anderson probably isn't coming back this season, or at least until the playoffs. And even if Freddie Anderson is healthy come playoff time, you probably don't want to just throw him back into the fire and his first game back be a playoff game, right? Honestly, wouldn't be all that surprised if we have seen Freddie Anderson play his last game as a Leaf, and if his injury is that serious and he won't be back this season, I think getting a guy like Riddick is pretty important here for the Leafs. I'm a lot more confident in a Campbell-Riddick tandem than a Hutchinson and Campbell tandem, that's for sure. Next up, we have a trade between the Islanders and the Senators that saw defenseman Braden Coburn sent to New York and a 2022 seventh round pick sent to Ottawa. Really a nothing trade here. Braden Coburn is a guy that's probably not going to be in the lineup every night for the Islanders, but it's depth. Next up, we have a trade that kind of came out of nowhere late last night before Hall was traded. Jeff Carter has been traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for a conditional 2022 third round pick and a conditional 2023 fourth round pick. I can't find the conditions on those draft picks like literally anywhere. I'm guessing the conditions aren't all that important, but this is a pretty interesting trade. Nonetheless, the Penguins give up a couple of picks for a veteran centerman in Jeff Carter, who is, you know, on the tail end of his career. He's 36 years old now, but Jeff Carter still is a solid offensive contributor in the bottom six. He has 19 points in 40 games this year, so slightly below a half point per game pace. Is he someone who's going to really move the needle for the Penguins? I don't think so, but he definitely doesn't make them any worse. If he scores, you know, some big goals in the playoffs, then this will be worth it. Now, this is a trade that was really random and really came out of nowhere. Adam Gaudette from the Canucks to the Blackhawks in exchange for Matthew Highmore. It's just a straight one-for-one -one swap. Both young-ish players. Highmore is 25, Gaudette is 24. I don't really get what the Canucks are doing here in the sense that I don't understand why they traded him now. Like, Gaudette really isn't having a great season. Seven points, four goals, 33 games. That's not great production compared to last season where he had 12 goals and 30. 33 points in 59 games, so if they're going to trade him, why wouldn't they have traded him after last season, where he put up pretty solid results and his value was definitely a lot higher than it is right now? Obviously, hindsight is 2020, but yeah, just kind of a weird move here. I'm not a huge Adam Gaudet fan, but I would definitely rather have him as an asset as opposed to Matthew Highmore, so I guess I like this trade more for the Hawks. Moving along now, this next trade saw Dmitry Kulikov dealt to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for a conditional fourth round pick in the 2022 draft. The condition on that pick is it becomes a third round selection if Edmonton wins a playoff round in 2021. So, you know, sort of high chances it becomes a third. I don't love this trade for the Oilers and I definitely don't hate it either. Kulikov is a fine bottom pairing defensive defenseman. Doesn't give you much of anything at all offensively, but like I said, he's okay defensively. He can kill penalties, add some depth to the Oilers blue line for sure. Next up, we have a really minor trade here. The Sharks basically got goaltender prospect Magnus Chirona. I think that's how you pronounce his name for free. He was a 2018 fifth round pick by the Lightning, has spent the last two seasons at the University of Denver. He's 20 years old, and you really just never know with goaltenders. They kind of come out of nowhere, so maybe he wins a Vezina Trophy one day. Who knows? Moving on now, we have another three-team deal, this one between the Golden Knights, the Hawks, and the Sharks. The Golden Knights acquired Matthias Yamark, Nick DeSimone, a fifth round pick in the 2022 draft. The Blackhawks receive a second round pick in 2021, a third round pick in 2022, and the Sharks receive a fifth round pick in 2022. 2022. With Vegas really not having a lot of cap space whatsoever, the Sharks had to swoop in and help retain some salary on Yanmark's contract. Yanmark is a pretty solid pickup for Vegas. He definitely helps their depth down the middle, which I would say is probably Vegas's weakest position. Yanmark is having a pretty strong season offensively. He's got 10 goals and 19 points in 41 games. That 10 goals is already four more than the six he had last year in 62 games. And for the Hawks, yes, they are in the thick of a playoff race right now in the Central Division, but there's just no way you can turn down a second and a third for Yanmark, who's on an expiring contract. That's a great return. Next up, we have another trade involving the Blackhawks. They sent Carl Soderberg to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for Josh Dickinson and Ryder Rolston. So the Avs are really getting the band back together. They already brought back Nemeth and now they reacquire Carl Soderberg. Considering what they gave up, I think it's a pretty nice addition for Colorado. I mean, Soderberg had the best seasons of his NHL career as a member of the Avalanche. He's 35, but he is still a decent bottom six two-way centerman. And for the Hawks, this is just them getting rid of yet another expiring contract to Josh Dickinson. 
kind of a non-factor. He's playing in the ECHL right now. He's 23 years old, undrafted player. Hopefully, Ryder Rolston can be something for Chicago. He's 19. He was a fifth round pick by Colorado in the most recent draft. Had six points in 28 games for Notre Dame this season. Unlikely he becomes much of anything, but can't really expect a big return for Carl Soderberg. Next up, we have a trade between the Philadelphia Flyers and the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens acquired defenseman Eric Gustafson in exchange for a seventh round pick in 2022. The Flyers are also retaining 50% of Gustafson's salary, so they pretty much gave him away. Gustafson is pretty much a pure offensive defenseman whose offensive numbers have kind of fallen off a cliff since he put up 60 points back in the 2018-19 season. So we'll see if he can bounce back with Montreal. I won't say it's a great addition. It's another capable body back on the blue line, and like I said, he was basically free, so why not? Next up, this trade kind of shocked me, if I'm being honest. The Florida Panthers acquire Sam Bennett from the Calgary Flames along with a sixth round pick in the 2022 draft in exchange for a second round pick in the 2022 draft and Emil Heineman. Heineman, who was a second round pick by the Panthers, 43rd overall in the most recent 2020 draft. So basically two second round picks for Sam Bennett here. That's a great return for Calgary. I do like the addition of Sam Bennett for the Florida Panthers, and I'd imagine they plan on retaining him past this season, given what they gave up. He brings some grit to their bottom six. He can kill penalties. Obviously does have a little bit of skill, but has really struggled to finish pretty much throughout his entire career. Sam Bennett has notoriously been pretty good in the playoffs throughout his career, so I'm sure that was pretty appealing for the Panthers, but man, this was still a massive overpayment, and Calgary fans should be ecstatic about this. Like, that's a better return, in my opinion, than the return Buffalo got for Taylor Hall, which is just mind-boggling. Next up, very minor trade here. The Maple Leafs acquire forward Antti Samela from the Sharks in exchange for Alexander Barabanov. Barabanov has played 13 games for the Leafs this season, doesn't have a goal yet, only one assist, does have five points in two American Hockey League games. I would describe him as a fringe NHL player. He definitely has a better chance of cracking the Sharks lineup than staying in the Maple Leafs lineup. And Antti Samela, same deal, fringe NHL player. There really isn't much to unpack here. This next trade saw the Ottawa Senators send defenseman Erica Branson to the Nashville Predators in exchange for a seventh round pick in 2023. So similar to what I said about Eric Gustafson, they basically gave Branson away for free. And for Nashville, I guess this makes sense. I mean, especially when you consider all of the injuries they've had to their blue line this season, but Erica Branson isn't really the greatest. This is sort of a nothing trade. Next up, we have the final Leafs trade of the deadline. Man, were they active over the past couple of days. This one saw the Leafs acquire defenseman Ben Hutton from the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for a fifth round pick in 2022. I know he's not the defenseman Leafs fans had in mind in terms of a trade target, but he's fine. He's probably not going to be in the lineup on a night in, night out basis, but he's there in case of injury. He's solid defensively. He's a good penalty killer. He's pretty much just insurance for the Maple Leafs and with the way that they've been loading up, this makes complete sense. Next up, another depth move here. The Washington Capitals acquire forward Michael Raffle from the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for a fifth round pick in the 2021 draft. Michael Raffle isn't really anything more than like a shutdown fourth line forward, but again, similar to what I just said about Ben Hutton in Toronto, this is insurance for Washington. It's added depth. Next up, the Vancouver Canucks acquire defenseman Madison Bowie and a fifth round pick in 2021 from the Hawks in exchange exchange for a fourth round pick in 2021. So basically they downgraded from a fourth round pick to a fifth and got Madison Bowie. Once upon a time, Madison Bowie was a highly touted prospect, but I mean, he's 25 years old now. He's played 156 NHL games. I just, I don't see anything there. I think it's very, very unlikely he becomes much of anything at the NHL level at all. Now this is a trade I'm a pretty big fan of for the Anaheim Ducks. I was hoping Detroit would go in and acquire Hayden Fleury. Obviously it didn't happen, but the Ducks acquired defenseman Hayden Fleury from the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for defenseman Yanni Hockenpah and a sixth round pick in the 2022 draft. First, looking at it from Carolina's point of view, Hockenpah is an NHL defenseman at the very least. He's played 42 games with the Ducks this season, only one point and it's an assist, but he's one of the league leaders in hits. The dude is huge. He's like six foot five, 220 pounds. He fits that bottom pairing, physical, just difficult to play against defenseman role a lot more than Hayden Fleury does, of course. And I think we can all probably agree that this isn't really equal value for Hayden Fleury, but this is one of those trades similar to the Robbie Fabry trade last year where Carolina is 
is trading him to just give him an opportunity. Playing for a team like the Carolina Hurricanes who have such a stacked blue line, it was hard for Hayden Fleury to really showcase what he can do and play a lot of minutes, play in like a top four role. In Anaheim, I think they're going to give him an opportunity to show that. I feel like there is more offensive upside than what he's shown. I mean, he only has one goal in 35 games this year. That's his only point. I'm not saying he's going to be some 50, 60 point defenseman, but I think in like an 82 game season, if he gets the opportunity, Hayden Fleury can be a guy who gives you 20 to 25 points and just is steady defensively and hopefully he can become that in Anaheim. And now finally ending the video off with a very, very exciting trade. Jordy Ben to the Jets for a sixth round pick in 2021. All jokes aside, I honestly kind of feel like the Jets took an L today. They really didn't do anything outside of acquiring Jordy Ben and does that move the needle at all? No, it's just an extra depth defenseman. So that is going to wrap up my recap and review of the 2021 NHL trade deadline. I had a lot of fun today. Be sure to get down there in the comments section and let me know which teams you think are the biggest winners from the trade deadline and which teams you think are the biggest losers. I'm not going to give you my biggest winners and losers yet because I think I'm actually going to make a dedicated video to that. But nonetheless, if you guys did enjoy today's video, please be sure to leave it a like. That is the best way to share your support. A lot of time and effort went into this. And most importantly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you liked what you saw and you want more NHL content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all in the next video.